Hi, this is Justice with Tablet Pro. In this video, we're going to be talking about opening up a preset and then how to get the correct preset for the Tablet Pro Manager. So right here, if we want this one, which gives us some extra features like the location button and the color button, what you want to do is go right here. You can double click right here and it will load the preset for the Tablet Pro Manager. Uh, and you can alternately inside here let's go ahead we're going to close this and then win shift z will open this for the tablet pro manager so you can use that keyboard shortcut as well the ui for the tablet pro manager or layout editor it has a different name same program so here is where you purchase here is where you edit the layouts and then you have the new button which will bring you right back to an unedited, this is a generic preset, has just a few buttons. I recommend not using a new one because it takes quite a bit of work to put one together. So let's go back over to the pen tool and let's go back to Rebel. Okay, so now this is here, the list of the different modes that you can select. You'll see that those are mirrored here in the layouts. So if we wanted float, you can see float. Uh, full screen is a full screen trackpad. Uh, I don't recommend using these ones unless you're an advanced user and you know what you're doing. So I'll talk about these in another video. The assist pad, this you have to have a button in a different mode in order to open it. So if we want, let's say we have this alt button, we can go here and we can select at the very bottom assist now when you press this button it will open this assist pad and then these are the different artist pad modes single row of buttons two rows this uh, can be used as two or three rows and four rows all right so if you have a file that you'd like to open this will open it so we're going to go ahead and we're going to go up here and we're going to go to my presets and we're going to open up our rebel file. All right, rebel five justice that we named in the last video. All right, save, we'll save it, save as. Again, I recommend that you navigate to the my presets folder. Again, you can find this here, pen settings, open. And then right here, right click, choose pin to quick access. You can also copy the path right here and paste it over in here, but I don't recommend doing that. I think that's a lot of extra work. Just pin it over here in your quick access. You just wanna make sure you have these all saved in the same spot. If you're uninstalling the pen tool, make sure that you make a backup of these and save it somewhere else on your computer. So I recommend changing the name. If you press the create button, it's going to create a new button for you. Anything that's not on this black background in the artist pads is not going to show up. You're not going to see it. If you're using something like full screen, you can put it anywhere here, create. This will go anywhere and that's fine. But on any of the artist pads, it needs to be or any of these float or left or side modes, it has to be over the black frame. If you've already got a button, clone will clone it, remove will remove it. Uh, front and back, this is if you have buttons on top of each other, which I often do. So I'll create a background image. This is a blank button, which is the very bottom option in the list. And then I change the color and I send it to the back. That's how you make a background color for the artist pad. Uh, in the future, we may have just an option to change the background color, but we don't yet. So front and back, small preview. What this will do is this will show you what it looks like if it's not docked, which is a setting inside the artist pad settings. And big preview will show you what it looks like when it's docked. Grid is going to create a grid that allows you to snap at the zero or the five and then different ones will have different snapping amounts. So you can click, you can see the grid right over here.
And again, this will snap at different places. I like the first one because I snap most everything at a zero or a five, or if I have three buttons, then they're, um, the width is 100. And so that means you're gonna have this split. If there's three buttons, this will be 33, 33, 33. I'll just show you. Okay, so we have three buttons right here. The width is 33, 33, and 34, which equals 100. Right here, this is the height, 5. And the entire pad, right up here, you see starts at 0. And we're going down by a height of 5. You can obviously you can have longer buttons or shorter buttons. Uh, the whole thing is a hundred this way and a hundred this way from left to right and from up to down. So that would mean if you're doing some math, if you have 20 buttons here, they're going to be uh, five each, five each of height. And you're going to want to start them or place them on the five or the zero as you're going up. This is your placement. This is your size. Placement, size. These are your modifiers. This is the Windows key. This is a toggle, which means that if you press the button, it will stay pressed until you press it again. This is a one second toggle, which means that when you press it, it will toggle on for one second. So if you're using something with the pen, you may have to be quick. I recommend using this if you have a program that doesn't support simultaneous pen and touch. You can press a button with the one second toggle with the modifier and then quickly use your stylus. And it should allow you to do a lot of different things a lot faster and with one less button press. This is where you change the button name. You have this big list of icons and that can be a little daunting. And so what we've done I'm going to press Win Shift Z to open this up. You can press this font awesome icons button. Go here, select 5.15.4, and that will probably change. And then you're just going to select whatever icon you want, copy the glyph, and then you're going to paste it back over here. And then over here and paste, and you can see that we've got that acorn. Very important acorn. If you want to change the color, you can use hex colors here. Clicking on here will give you a uh, color picker, background color of the button. This is where you change that. Location, if you're trying to have a button, click a location on the screen. So if we wanted to have a button, click up here. Then I would move the pointer there and I would press the location button, uh, which is also uh, Alt X or Win Alt X on the keyboard and that will copy the coordinates. You can see what's going on here, and then you'd paste it in here. When you paste it in here, it will take over whatever this is. It's just gonna copy over it. So location will trump it. And right down here is the tooltip. So when you hover over the top of these buttons, it'll give you information. And you have to add that information right here. It comes from somewhere, and this is where it comes from. So make sure if you're making presets to share that you document your uh, buttons, what they're supposed to do. If a button requires another program uh, like this one, uh, add the other program in brackets. This is just best practices or add information on what happens with that button into the tooltip. So if you're using a program like Photoshop that doesn't have a keyboard shortcut assigned to a certain function, that means it's an empty keyboard shortcut and you want someone to assign whatever you have here, like this, assign. This will tell people. If you're using another program and the keyboard shortcut is using that other program in the background. So if you had something that's built, it uses a function from Maya or it uses a function from somewhere else, put the other program's name right here and that will help. If you select the assist pad or other modes in layout, then the aspect ratio option will become available. And you'll notice here that when we change the aspect ratio, it'll change the aspect ratio of the assist pad. If you have questions on the assist pad, watch the video I have specifically on the assist pad, and that'll tell you about all the settings, what things you can do with the assist pad and what it's good for.
All right, in the next video, we're going to be talking about this drop down list, all the functions that you can do with Tablet Pro buttons. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you have questions, put it in the comment section. And as always, stay creative and have a wonderful day.